know, for someone who doesn't particularly enjoy winter, my brain sure releases a fair amount of dopamine when I see leaves fall. So this week, I wanted to recreate another Halloween costume. So I did this last year and, no, two years ago. I did this two years ago and I had a ton of fun with it. I used this kind of crepe, crepe, crepe paper. Crepe paper. It's crepe paper. Costume idea thing from the 20s, I believe. As you probably know, recreations are my absolute favorite thing to do. When I can make it spooky. For a while, I've had Halloween Pinterest board of ideas and this image has just been sitting there waiting for an opportunity. And so here it is. And I think it's doable, which is always a good thing to be. So here I am in the thrift store parking lot. As always, I'm gonna try my best to find materials that aren't from the fabric store. When I can recycle, I really, really try to do that. Fabric, bed sheets, curtains, anything that I think could work for this. I've got my autumn attire on, eyeliner sharp enough to be talked about on a true crime podcast. And now I'm going to cover it all up because I don't actually like when people look at me. Let us go peruse. Oh, now I look like Austin Powers again. Why do I have the same face as Mike Myers? God dang it, it's limiting. Oh, Whatever, embrace it. Groovy, baby, yeah. Let's go. $34 later. I am a very happy floor troll. I was able to get everything that I needed. So now I'm headed home and I can show you what I got and we can talk a little bit more about the design of this whole thing. Let's go. Honestly, I'm surprised no one stopped me and asked for my autograph thinking that Mike Myers was in town filming Austin Powers 4. <laughs> Let me show you what I got. I was pleasantly surprised that the thrift store had some Halloween stuff out so that I didn't have to make an extra trip to an actual Halloween store. Although I love it, it is a foul temptress. These really long black gloves. And they also had this collar, which I'm just gonna rip that off. But. And then as far as fabrics, for the cape, I just got this sewing fabric. I think it's like, I don't know, some sort of polyester, I'm guessing. I, I, uh. I'm hoping this is enough for the little bat cape. For the bodice, I got curtains. Almost look like they're black and gray, but they're just black. And it's nice and thick so that it should give some nice structure to that bodice because I don't think I'm gonna go with like full 1800s methods. Sort of fake it <laughs> and just wear like a corset underneath. For the skirt, weird kind of fabric. Honestly, if I had to describe it, you know the fabric that's like underneath your bed frame or your couch? Your cats like to scratch holes and go inside it. That's what this feels like. Got a big old sheet of that. I kind of like how it frays, so I might actually just not hem this and have like the natural edges showing. A pair of shoes that I can put little bats on and not feel bad about it. And that's all I got, which is kind of nice because like I said, I'm trying to limit what I purchase and bring into this household because we are going to be moving it all somewhere else in about a month. So that being said, there are no more open houses. So that can only mean one thing. Tornado Rachel's back, baby. Feels good. So if we take a look at the design, we've got the little bat cape, which I think I will be putting either plastic zip ties or some of the boning that I have just to give those little ridges and make it actually look like bat wings. The bodice, I think I'm just gonna look for sort of a corset pattern in my stash and see if we can try to replicate that. If not, I'm totally okay with just having something that looks similar to that. Then the skirt, I think what I might do is take an existing skirt that I don't wear anymore and just sort of sew the ruffles onto that. I think that will be the quickest and easiest way to do this. My favorite part is going to be these little bat details. And these I am going to make out of foam clay. Simple. 
I think, maybe. First thing I'm going to do is make these little bats because those do need to dry. So before adieus are in any way furthered, let's go make some bats. Welcome to my spooky workshop, bats. To be honest, I don't have much of a plan for these other than what I have done in the past. Tin foil that happened to be in this house when we moved in. So my guess is that it's from 1984. Oh, February, ah, oh, 2008. That's disappointing. So I'm gonna make the base skeletons, if you will, out of this and then cover that with foam clay just so I'm not using all of my supply. And it helps me figure out the size and shape that I need. And especially the one that's gonna go on my head, we're gonna need to figure out a good dome shape for that. So I have quite a large one. And then we need to do the little bat here. And I think I might just sculpt the little bats on the shoes right onto the shoes. That'll save me some time. Yeah, so no other plan other than to just kind of wing it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing and honestly I'm very hungry so it's hard for me to focus on anything. Let's do it, okay. The next few minutes are going to be absolute hell on your eardrums. So um, to help with that, here is some calming music. Maybe some ocean sounds. It looks a little bit like a kangaroo. Now we can take this and cover it with foam clay. So now that these three bats and a dingo are drying, I will see you tomorrow. Good morning. Not only is it now appropriate Halloween season, also tis the season for Halloween playlists featuring songs that aren't particularly spooky at all, but just happen to have one or two slightly spooky words in the title or in the song. Where are you? And I'm so sorry. It's Halloween because they say Jack and Sally. Anywho, yes, hello, day two. As you saw, I finished up all of the foam work that I needed to do. I also patched up some of the uh, wonky bits with quick seal. That's boring stuff, so I didn't film it, but it's just gonna help because foam clay doesn't stick to itself great and it's not like clay where you can kind of just smooth out all the crevices if you will now time to start sewing <sighs> you know being a maker of things i've gotten a few comments over time about how it seems like i don't particularly even like sewing and that is because my friends sewing sucks for like 70 percent of the time and i'm not afraid to admit it i'm tired of pretending it doesn't I'll never understand the people that say sewing is therapeutic for them. 
first I need to find a pattern I think that's gonna work for this bodice. I'm pretty sure I have some corset patterns that will have similar seam lines that that does. I'm not worried about it. As always, this is for fun, not historical accuracy or trying to match the picture absolutely to the T. I'm gonna do my best. I'm not gonna, not gonna beat myself up, okay? I'm not gonna do it. And then the bat cloak, I'm pretty excited for it. I think that might be the first thing I do. Stash! Fabric stash. Oh boy, okay, let's see what we got here. Anything like corsety looking, I think. I think I'm gonna go with this pirate kind of thing, but very specifically, this vest. And I think what I'm gonna do is have it be a closed front, but then a lace up back so I can make it as tight or as loose as I want it to be, depending on how many fruit flies I eat. That's what bats eat, right? <laughs> now that I've got that all figured out, we can move on to the bat cape. And to do that, I am going to implore one of my more scientific methods. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of the time that I realized this was probably the weirdest thing I've ever done in a video. This is me realizing that this is one of the weirdest things I've ever done in a video. This is one of the weirdest things I've ever done in a video. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, this part was mildly irritating just because the boning really keeps its shape from being in a coil. So I did go over it with my heat gun on a very, very light setting just to help a little bit with that. So now that that is finally done, <laughs> I am just going to get the bodice out of the way because honestly, it's like this looming nag in the back of my head that I'm gonna have to get to it and I don't want to. We're just gonna get it done that I don't have to think about it anymore. I have cut out the two pieces of the pattern that I need. Very simple, I'm not gonna go too crazy with this. Twice the amount I need from this fabric to make a lining and make it kind of thick. I could do interfacing, but I don't want to. <laughs> I think that's probably where I'm gonna stop today and then tomorrow we can do the skirt, paint and attach and just all the finishing touches, which if I've learned anything in my sewing journey is that the finishing touches always seem to take a little bit longer than you think they are, even if they're simple, so. Woo! Oh my God. Life just flashed before me eyes. Normally, this pattern calls for this back piece to be put on a fold, so that way you can just flatten out into one giant piece. But because this is where my lacing is gonna go, I am going to cut out just four individual pieces, and I think that should work. Look at these little goblin feet. Little goblin man. This is one of the layers just pinned together. Pull it back like it will be. It's not too shabby. Huh? I mean, obviously I can make adjustments while I'm sewing. Well, that wasn't so bad. Another case of the thing that I kept putting off and stressing about not being so bad. <laughs> sewing all these pieces together and then the lining as well. Putting those two parts together, also I'm going to sew 
all those boning pieces to the cape. And I think that's pretty good progress for today and leaves me in decent shape for tomorrow. Let's get to sewing. So not that long ago, I had like a, a sewing day with my friend Sarah. We were both sewing and she did this thing where she just like led the thread to the side of her machine and snipped it. I don't want to be dramatic, but that may have been the most earth shattering, groundbreaking discovery that has ever happened to me. The joys of teaching yourself sewing is that you don't actually learn the majority of the basics of your machine. To attach the lining to the outer layer, I actually find this process very satisfying. I pressed all my seams and all my edges, and then you kind of just put the two layers on top of each other and tuck in those edges so it looks something like this. I chose to hand sew this whilst wearing a face mask and watching a horror game playthrough because I'm too much of a wuss to actually play them myself all the while being yelled at by my cat. Normal ass house. What? Why? Good morning. Day three. Today is the day we need to finish literally everything. So the list of all the shiz we have to get done today is, um, the skirt is probably the biggest one. Coat all the little bats in Plasti Dip, figure out the little kerchief situation and the bustle around the waist. I guess then just figure out how to attach everything to costume and my head. Oh, and paint the cloak. That's it. We got a lot of little things to do simultaneously. The bodice fits me a lot better than expected, so I'm really excited about that. Obviously, it does not look quite as regal as an actual 1800s corset design like in the illustration, but It'll do. Pig. You know, I feel like I'm in this stage of my hair so long and boring that I just want to like chop it all off. But then I have moments of feeling like a show horse. Let's work on the skirt. <laughs> Okay, um, turns out I don't actually have any Plasti Dip. It is a rare occurrence. I'm just going to directly spray paint them black. We're just gonna give it a try. Um, worst case scenario, I, I'm imagining I can just go over it a couple times with this. So, uh, let's give it a go. Very professional spray paint setup. All right, skirt time. So I have this skirt that I don't wear anymore. Was just going to donate. It's not vintage or anything, so don't come for me. Binks, can you eat a little quieter? Cut out strips of this fabric, just the length that it is. Banks, not you, sir. Oh, I can't, oh, I can't do this. Very nice. I called your sister's name, huh? Oh, the audacity! I'm gonna need you though to stand literally anywhere else. <laughs> oh my! John Lennon was singing specifically about you, wasn't he? I'm just a jealous guy. Was that good food? Don't you dare. Don't do it. Wow. Like I was saying, pleat them like so. And then I'm hoping that will translate into the kind of ruffles that she has on the illustration. In the illustration. I was distracted by you, mittens. Theoretically, it should be easy to do and then I just kind of pin it to the skirt and then sew along the top ones. Halloween is about getting crafty and that's all she wrote. <laughs> Let's get started.
Okay, the skirt is sewn and I love it so much. because I did pretty much the same thing for my book page dress. A lot more like voluminous than I thought it would be, which is really nice. Like the pleats kind of go out like that. I might paint some of the details onto the little bats. Maybe some gray highlights because right now they're all black and it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. But other than that, skirt's done, bodice is almost done. Cape. I do need to heat gun the cape a little bit more because it is still kind of flapping all over the place. And then just spray paint that really quick just to hide all the white <sighs> boning. Oh, maybe I should attach that to, the, to this so that the cape stays up. Will that choke me? I'm a little sweaty, so I'm gonna take a quick break outside with the little man enjoy some of the fall foliage how's that sound good because you don't really have a choice unless you were to say fast forward about 30 seconds but that's your prerogative okay let's go outside <laughs> someone who doesn't particularly enjoy winter, my brain sure releases a fair amount of dopamine when I see leaves fall. <gasps> Time to airbrush. Made a little gray concoction and put it in my airbrush. Looks like Frodo. <laughs> Aww. So like I said, I think I'm just gonna hit some of the ridges and raised spots with some highlights just so pops a little bit more and then I think I'm gonna make his eyes orange, light brown kind of situation. Pop some of those ridges, maybe his wings with some gray. Hello. It's no secret that painting is my favorite part of the process so let's get started. He looks like a chihuahua. <laughs> Spooky chihuahua. like he's seen some sh <laughs> so cute and terrifying at the same time. Oh, I love Halloween. So to make the little uh, shoulder kerchief thing, literally I am just taking this extra bat fabric from my uh, Halloween strawberry dress, drape it over my shoulders like so. Throw a couple pins in here, and then I'm just gonna sew right here. And then I'm gonna add some Velcro for the little guy to go right here. Easy peasy. <laughs> ah, this is a casual accessory, right? I can wear this all year long, right? Hello, friend. Okay, moving on. And with a few finishing touches and a coat of gloss on the eyeballs, we are ready for the reveal. Surprise, it's me. All right, wrap up time. Hmm. Ta-da. Pardon. Ta-da. It is complete. Every last little piece of this. As I was getting dressed to go take pictures of this, I realized how many different moving parts there actually are, and there's a lot. Also, not having access to a mirror and also having a husband who is 
literally no help in that arena. Um, I was a little nervous, but I hope everything came out good. I'm super friggin' happy with it. I just, I feel like it's been a while since I've done a costume that has so many different parts to it. And the fact that it's a recreation and made of almost completely recycled materials, good stuff. Much like a lot of the things I make, it definitely requires some adjusting here and there. Partly because with the skirt that I chose, some of the khaki is uh, poking out. So I had to make sure that this was covering that. This guy kind of just gets a little crooked. and The headpiece stays on surprisingly well. Probably should have used a ginger colored elastic. I had a lot of fun taking the photos, <laughs> even though a young girl walked by with her mom and said, isn't she too old to be dressed up? To which I say, hurtful. But then it's okay because I met a lovely human named Abby who made it all worth it. So <laughs> I hope that you had fun. We only have a couple weeks left of Halloween related videos. I'm just trying to savor that Halloween flavor as much as I can before it's gone because I feel like it happens in the blink of an eye, in the bat of an eye, if you will. That is it. I love you so much. Whether you're new or old to this channel, if you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload almost every Friday and we have fun here. I need to put the mic down for this one. Hold on. You're welcome. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Um, hello? Why? What? Makeup is endless, refrains like a stone. But we'll get that to a little bit. Does it look like Bruce Wayne? I can't sleep, cannot dream tonight. Now that I've got that figured out, bleh, 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 bleh. just jump real high and say back. Careful. Yeah, I was gonna say, careful on the pricklies. Suck it up for one jump. Why do they look like the demigorgons? Mm. Ew. All right, so now that. So now that. Oh my god. Action. I always feel like. I don't think you fully committed to the bat yell. Yeah. Bat! Something yeah. like that. I'm the bat queen.